name is Heather and this is Shabby Paints and today we are doing Fab Fridays with Heather. So thank you so much for joining me and um, I'm just going to, hey good morning Shannon, hello hello. Um, so I'm going to hang out just a second uh, while we wait for people to see that we're live. And I'm gonna bring up my little box on my computer so I can see your comments. Um, I try to watch them on the phone, but they don't always, sometimes it kind of stalls out and doesn't show up in real time. Hi, good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Laura. Thanks so much for joining us. Hey, hey. Um, so I'm gonna pull it up on here too, just in case, just um, so I can be watching in both places. And here I am, and here you are, so that's awesome. Okay, so, hi Beth, thanks for joining us. So, I know that just a few weeks ago, we did a whitewashing brick video, and um, that was a pretty um, good demonstration of whitewashing, um, but in that video, we, um, we're getting a lot of questions about whitewashing wood. So I thought that I would just go over whitewashing wood with you today. And I'll show you this cute little bench that I pulled out of a barn. So let me just kind of back you up and give you a cute little view here. Let's see if you can see it. Yeah. So it's just this cute, adorable, little rustic bench and here I'll pull you back in so we can see each other again. Um, then, yes, there we go. And um, it's going to go on my front porch and it's going to have flowers and stuff sitting on it. <laughs> so that's going to be super fun. And yeah. Okay, so what we're actually going to be using to do this and in the last video that we did I did not show you my actual mixing process and we were getting some questions about that. Hi Chantel, thanks for joining us. And um, and so I thought I would just do the whole thing. I thought we would actually mix it, maybe do some tests on this piece and see how um, thick we want the wash, if we want it to be a lighter wash or a darker wash. So I thought I would just go through my process with you. and. We're, oh, oh yeah, and for those of you who've been watching the past few weeks, you might be able to see the cabinet in the background. It's a little dark, so sorry about that. Um, that corner of my house that my office is in gets a little bit, the lighting isn't very good. But yeah, isn't she so cute? There she is. Boop, boop. <laughs> yeah, so I absolutely love it, and I'll tell you guys, ever since I've painted it, it has become so apparent that I need to paint my walls. Um, this is the color that they were when we actually bought the house three years ago and so now this is like on my list of things to do is get rid of this weird color yeah um okay so super excited good morning lisa good morning chantelle so excited you're here so today i thought that we would whitewash this cute little bench with shabby paints worn white i realize this is backwards but i thought i would demonstrate and to whitewash this piece, it is going to take literally pretty much virtually no paint at all. And I'm gonna show you that, which is gonna be great. So this is our eight ounce size. And this little guy right here will actually paint like a pretty large dresser. Um, this is amazing. So these run about $12 and they're, they'll do actually a lot. So I could probably whitewash like 15, 20 benches with this paint, maybe more, I don't even know. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I am going to, hi Laura, I love worn white too. I'm addicted to it. I love Alamo and snow, but I love the farmhouse creaminess of the worn white. I just love cottage and farmhouse, so I tend to gravitate towards the warm white just because it's so creamy and pretty. Okay, so what I've done is I've shaken my little eight ounce jar hi uh good morning from spokane so i have family in spokane and this is one of our new stylists eileen popping on so welcome and thank you for joining us and thank you for joining us jasmine so here is my little bowl and i'm just going to pour the smallest i mean just the teeny teeny tiniest amount 
of paint. Like I do not need very much at all. And so I don't glue myself out of this jar. I'm going to wipe these threads really, really good where I poured um, because the paint is so awesome. You can glue yourself out of your jar if you're not careful. So always wipe your threads really well. And don't worry, if you ever do glue yourself out of a jar of shabby paints, um, you can just kind of, I'll go outside on my front porch or my back porch and just sort of tap the lid on the concrete or the sidewalk or something just to break that up. And then you can kind of like opening a, a glass jar of like spaghetti sauce or something and it's stuck. You just sort of tap the lid and that'll help. Um, so I just poured a tiny bit in there. I want to say maybe two tablespoons about. And, um, and then I have a little jar of water here, and this is just willy-nilly. Um, so this is how I paint. I paint willy-nilly. <laughs> I just kind of fly by the seat of my pants and, and work intuitively. So as I'm doing this, if I accidentally put a little bit too much water in here, guess what? Then I can just add a little bit more paint. Not very scientific, but um, it works for me. Hey. So I put about... Mm, two tablespoons or so of paint in my little um, container here. And so I want to say I probably put, I don't know, maybe four tablespoons of water. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my brush just to mix this up really, really well. Now, I do a lot of whitewashing so I can kind of see um, how it's going to be. And for me personally, I think, well actually, you know what, I'm just going to show you my test process. Hi, my aunt is on, she's watching, hello, hi auntie, welcome, thank you. Um, so I'm actually just going to go through my little test swatch scenario with you guys. So I think you can see pretty good. Um, and, and always keep a rag nearby. Actually, a dry one <clears throat> when doing a whitewash isn't a bad idea because that way, if you don't like how the wash is going, you can wipe some of it back. And um, hi, Annie. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hello. We're whitewashing this bench together, whitewashing wood. This is a cute little find that I probably pulled out of a barn somewhere, an old shed or something and it's going to have flowers on it on my front porch. So we're gonna whitewash it first because that's just too cute. So we're gonna go through the test process now. I've mixed up some worn white and some water and I did about two tablespoons of shabby paints and about four tablespoons of water. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and test my mixture and see how I like it. And that's too thick for me. I want a little bit more of a wash. So I'm going to add just a little teeny tiny bit more water, about two more tablespoons I'd say, and I'm going to mix it up really well again. And now we're going to try it. So I'm just sort of, you don't need a ton, so I'm sort of squeezing off the excess here. And now we're going to do another test see how I like this. And I feel like this is going to be a pretty nice wash and it does soak in. So I'm going to kind of allow it to do that and then sort of see how I like it after a few moments. Like if you give it, you know, I don't know, 30 seconds or something like that, you can kind of see how it's soaking in and if you like it. And I like it a lot. I want it a little bit wider, whiter. So I'm just gonna wipe a little bit of it back. And um, so whitewashing this piece of wood right here, this is um, an old bench. It looks like it was stained probably a million years ago, um, but most of it has worn off and it's very weathered. And so the bare wood is exposed so that it does so that it does have the ability. Hi, 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 hi everybody. Hi Luana, thanks for joining us. So it does have the ability to um, soak in. Now, 
if you're working with a piece like an actual piece of furniture like say a cute little secretary desk or a table or something like that and it actually has hi francis and it actually has the finish mm -hmm. on it um then you're going to want to sand it down to the bare wood um, to actually do a whitewash if you try to do a whitewash on something sealed it's not going to be able to absorb into the wood so if you don't want to sand it all the way down you at least have to sand off the old finish enough to where it's going to be able to soak in and absorb so keep that in mind it works best on raw wood type situations um, and then also keep in mind that like we've done together before, we whitewash the brick um, fireplace at the Florida de V. Um, you can whitewash or use a wash over a solid paint color on a piece of furniture, on a fireplace, on really anything that you want. So this is a fun thing to do. Hi Ruby, thank you for sharing this video. Hopefully it helps some people out there. Um, so, so yeah, so I love a whitewash because I think it's just so shabby, so farmhouse, and it can just kind of mute and add character to, to a, a piece. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to keep going and I'm going to kind of try to keep the video close here so you guys can really, really, really see what I'm doing. So let's bring in a little closer. How's that, you guys? Yeah? Okay. So first we're just gonna start with the top. And the other thing that I really love about doing a whitewash on wood or brick or really pretty much anything is that it's so quick. We're gonna breeze through this like in nobody's business. It's gonna be amazing. Hi Donna, thanks for joining us. And Erica says it's pretty, so thank you for that. Thank you for your support and encouragement. I love you. Um, so yeah, so it's so quick and that's really nice. Um, so yeah, I love this. I think this is going to be cute and I think it's just going to be really darling for my front porch with some flowers on it. And it's such an easy thing to do and it's very intuitive. So um, every once in a while, because the paint will settle, you'll just want to go ahead and, um, hi Donna, thank you for sharing. Um, you'll just want to go ahead and sort of mix it up again, and that's going to help you to get an even wash. Um, but you don't want too much on your brush at a time, so just sort of squeeze it out before you keep going. And you just go and on a small little piece like this um, you know we can do this together in about five minutes and then um, yeah so it won't be until a little later today because I have some appointments and things to do after this but I am going to be getting this out on my front porch for you guys I'm gonna cover it in flowers and I'm gonna take some pictures so you can see how picking up some cute little free thing like this on the side of the road or out of a barn that your friend has or something like that, taking five minutes and just two tablespoons of paint, giving it a little wash, um, can just like give your front porch just the cutest little bunch for flowers. Now, I wouldn't sit on this guy. Oh no, this is a rickety old piece. So this is definitely a flower holder for sure. Um, I will say that much. It's it's a rickety old girl. So yeah, <laughs> Michelle says can't wait, so thank you. Um, <laughs> and my aunt's wanting to know, should I use that tag with my share? Absolutely, absolutely, and thank you guys. Um, I love whitewashing so much, and we do get a lot of questions about it, and it's so simple, so, um, so yeah, so hopefully any of you who've been really wanting to jump into whitewashing wood or, or whatever, this will help you because it's really simple. And then we are going to finish this with shabby Mazax when we're done. Because this piece is going to go outside in the weather, um, and I live in Oregon, so the Oregon weather is pretty dang hard on just about everything, for sure. Um, we get a lot of rain and so um, I definitely seal everything that's going to go outside. Um, and what's nice about shabby paints is it's waterproof and UV proof protectant. Um, so it's going to do a really good job 
of protecting this piece outside in the weather, which is going to be great. Uh, Lisa Burke says, you should go around your house and show what you have done. Um, Lisa, yes, we are going to do that. Um, not today, probably, um, but I'm sure you can see the little hutch in the background that we've been working on together. Um, I actually did remodel my master bathroom with shabby paint Snow White, and it is so beautiful. And Shabby Shannon, the owner of the company, she has been begging me for a while she's like show everybody your bathroom it is so cute so i'm definitely going to be maybe next week giving you guys a tour of my bathroom that i redid with shabby paints um yeah and a cute farmhouse style so it's very cute so yes i'll definitely um be sort of highlighting different areas of my house each week as we do this together so you can see the projects um and then next week, I'll probably definitely be showing you guys the fireplace that I did as well. And um, yeah, and when we're actually done with this bench, I'll flip you around because I have two fireplaces. And this fireplace right here, I actually really want to whitewash as well. So maybe one of these times, I don't want to bore you by doing too many whitewashing videos, but if you guys want to watch me do this uh, fireplace that I'm going to show you, actually, I'll just show you right now. We'll just have some fun. <laughs> so come with me. Oh, we're going to be doing this piece eventually too. Um, that little, I think it's called the Jacobian Buffet or something like that. Um, so let's see here. Yes, it's covered in stuff right now. Sorry, you guys. But here's my fireplace and I really, really want to um, do a whitewash on my fireplace here as well and so that might be fun to do together sorry it's messy I always am kind of a clutter bug I try not to be but you know how it goes um, yeah so anyways so that's that so we'll keep going but yes I have lots of fun things I can't wait to show you at my house we'll have some fun together with it my, my whole house is pretty much oh you can't see me sorry guys there you go are we back okay <laughs> okay um yeah so i've done oh so shannon i also did a chicken coop with shabby paints so we'll have to go out there one of these days and check that out as well because the chicken coop is absolutely adorable um so yeah and you guys can also a lot of these projects that i'm talking about that i've done you can check out on my um my personal business is called the shabby relic and um so i have a facebook page and you can check that out and you can see a lot of those projects on there as well uh, so that's fun so we're gonna be working in my house a lot together I'm really excited about doing these videos because I don't know about you guys but I'm one of those people who's so busy making everyone else's house beautiful that my um, house gets a little bit neglected sometimes you know because we're mompreneurs <laughs> and we're we're super busy all the time and so, um, so I'm excited to be doing these videos with you guys because it kind of creates the space for me to work on my own house together with you, which is gonna be super fun. Um, so Michelle is saying that the buffet is really beautiful. Thank you, Michelle. So is it Jacobean or Jacobian? Like, how are those pronounced? I've been dying to know. So if any of you out there has the answer to that question, please let me know because that's what it is. It's either a Jacobean or a Jacobian. I don't know how you pronounce it, but I'm very excited. And that's gonna be one of our projects together. So I'm just going to shift this over so we can do the other side. Yes. And I'm gonna pop around here so we can keep going on our bench here. And yeah, so in the background you can see, probably, I think you can see part of the buffet. It's a little dark. Um, but we're gonna be definitely working on that piece together at some point for sure. So I'm just going. And I really think that this is a pretty nice wash. It's a pretty heavy wash, um, but I like the cottage look. So I feel like this is gonna look really cute on my front porch. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. And hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing here. Sometimes it's hard to tell on the camera angle, camel, camera angle if you guys can see me or not. 
and then let me know if you have any questions as well. <laughs> so Francis is saying that she doesn't think it's Jacobean and the Gilded Attic is saying she thinks that it's Jacobean. So yeah, that seems like it would be make more sense. Um, but yeah, if anyone knows for sure, I'd love to know. Yeah, and then also, if you guys have pieces that you have whitewashed, you should definitely post your projects on our Shabby Paints Facebook page. And if you're not already a member of our um, Shabby Paints Questions and Answers group, our Shabby Paints Questions and Answers group is great because it's set up like a community. Everyone can answer um, questions about our products and you can really get kind of questions from your peers on there and other people using the products. People love to post their projects on there and get inspiration and ideas. Um, and it's just really nice because you can ask questions and um, you know really kind of make friends on there and get ideas. So definitely please jump on to our questions and answers group and collaborate with us. We would love that. So we're gonna do the legs now. And some, this one's got pretty deep grooves because it is weathered. So I just kind of use my brush and push the paint into the grooves. And this is just, it's so easy, you guys. So, so easy. And I'm sure you guys can see it wobbling with me painting it. So it's definitely one of those pieces that uh, no one's gonna be sitting on for sure. I think I really did pull it out of a barn, <laughs> probably. That sounds like something I would do. And you'll probably notice too that I'm painting inside the house. I don't have windows open or anything like that because um, Shabby Paints does not have any fumes or chemicals, heavy metals, things like that. Um, so you can feel really good about painting inside. You don't have to be on the back porch or the garage, and it's cold here in Oregon today, so I definitely didn't want to be out in the garage, for sure. And you can see I'm cooking along, I'm almost done. And it's so easy. And it dries really, really fast also. Um, so let's see, I'm gonna use another kind of brush to maybe get in that little hole right there. I'm just gonna push the paint in. that knot area like that good okay so now we're going to go ahead and move to the other side here so you can see that leg so I'm going to move around we're going to work on that side together and it's been a little bit so I'm going to go ahead and mix the paint up again and then you can see I'm squeezing it off Michelle wants to know, how did she miss that group? And yeah, it's a really great group, you guys. Um, we love the community there, and it's just wonderful. And the other really cool thing about the Shabby Paints Facebook page and our, um, and our questions and answers group is if you have a furniture painting business, post your finished projects with your watermark on there so we can see your business and we can see what you do and what you're all about um, using our products. We love it. Um, we do ask that you post only Shabby Paints exclusive, um, so pieces that you've done with Shabby Paints, so please adhere to that. Um, but yeah, we welcome you and we're excited to have you. Um, it's a great community and it's also a really great place to find um, ideas and inspiration and, and just get quad, uh, pro uh, product questions answered and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, so this is just cooking right along. I absolutely love it. Um, let's see here. And then Shannon also, if you're watching the comments, she just posted a link to the group. So if any of you guys were wanting to avoid having to go and find it, you can just follow that link and um, fill out the quick questionnaire and then we'll add you to the group, which will be awesome. So while I'm waiting for uh, 
this part to dry. I'm just gonna go ahead and do these little leg stabilizers and some of this other stuff. I'm not quite sure if you can totally see, but just keep going. And then we're gonna seal it together. So usually when I'm sealing, I would use a blue Shabby Paints applicator sponge, um, but this is pretty rough wood. Um, so I'm actually going to be demonstrating our sealer with a brush, um, which is another question that we get a lot of um, because, because it's so rough, for one, it would really beat up my sponge and it would also be hard to get the sealer in all of these grooves. And I do want it to be nicely protected because it is gonna be out in the Oregon weather. Um, so we'll be doing that together in just a moment. And I'm almost done. I feel like it's only taken a few minutes. I've spent most of the time yammering. <laughs> so if I was really focused, I could have already been done by now, for sure. And then another thing that you can do if you're really looking for great ideas and inspiration is um, make sure that you follow our um, Instagram as well. And if you're looking for like certain um, colors, you can do a, hash, a hashtag search. I can't talk today, you guys. Um, you can do a hashtag search, like hashtag worn white, um, hashtag um, Georgia, or any of our beautiful 45 colors. And you can just kind of see what people have been up to and what they've been posting in those colors. And I love to do that personally. Um, I love to go on and see what people have been doing and get fun ideas and and all of that. And then we also are on Pinterest as well. So you can see, um, you know, different projects. Um, we have a lot of different blog posts. Um, so the bathroom that I did that I'm gonna show you guys, um, not today, but probably next week, I did Shabby Shannon's um, faux shiplap um, method for my bathroom. And it looks so cute, so shabby, so farmhouse. And so the, her tutorial on how to do that is um, on the blog section of our Shabby Paints website, which is www.shabbypaints.com. Um, or I believe that's also posted on Pinterest as well. And that's a step-by-step -step tutorial, which is really awesome. And it's so easy. I think that the supply cost um, for doing the faux shiplap, um, I think the cost of the wood was like, I wanna say under $20 for my whole bathroom. Um, so really, really affordable for sure. this dry for just a few moments and see if I miss any of your questions. Um, so do any of you have questions about what I'm doing at all? Let me know. I would love to know. I'm going to uh, just refresh this and make sure I didn't miss any of your comments. Okay, so Shabby Shannon just looked it up and it is Jaco, Jack, oh, okay, so she says it's Jack, Jacobine. Oh, I did not know that. <laughs> Jacobine, okay, so that's different than both of the ideas that I had, Jacobine. Alrighty, well, thank you for looking that up and finally putting that to rest. I've been wanting to know that for about three years. <laughs> Because that's about how long ago I picked up that piece over there and was wanting to know how do I tell people about it. Um, so let's see. All right, so we're just going to wait for this to dry. And then, um, yeah, so. Yeah. 
So let me know what you think so far and if you have any questions as well. Um, I absolutely love shabby pinks. This is dry almost um, already. Um, it probably would have already been dry had I not added the water for the wash. Um, so shabby paints is really nice because you don't have to be waiting too long for things to dry, which is great. Um, so I absolutely love that. And then our top coat is the same way. Um, so this is our shabby paints top coat. Um, we have two clear top coats. We have a satin variety and a matte variety. And today I'm going to be using the matte to really keep the beautiful shabby look of this piece. I don't want it to be, I don't want it to really have a sheen. I just want it to look very cottage, very cute. Um, so I'm gonna be using the matte variety, um, which is gonna be awesome. And what I love about this is it has like the protection of a polyurethane without any baggage, without any smell, without any difficult applications. It goes on in minutes and it's absolutely wonderful. Um, so that's great. So unlike waxing, you're not buffing or doing anything like that. And it's, um, you know, I've had wax pieces melt in the sun and they don't hold up to water or steam or grease in a kitchen and things like that. So I really love our top coat um, because it's so waterproof, so UV protectant, super easy to clean. And it's also like a one and done application. So once you have applied this, you're not needing to do it annually, um, like with wax products. So I really appreciate that about our products for sure. Um, so I think I'm going to move you over here to the other side again, while we're waiting for this to dry, I'm going to do a little bit more work over here. Not totally sure if you can see me very well or not. I think so. Let's see. Maybe just a little bit. There we go. Okay, and so I'm just gonna go ahead and mix my paint up again. Squeeze it off. And I'm gonna work on the interior of this piece a little bit. So I'm gonna go behind here Hopefully you can see me, hopefully you can hear me. And I'll just do this little part while we're waiting for the main part to dry. Yeah, and then like I said, this is such an easy thing that you can do. If you're going to do this on, um, I love doing a whitewash effect on tables and different things like that. So um, but what you just want to make sure is if it has a finish on it, um, a wash is not going to be able to absorb. So you want to make sure that you're taking off any old finish before you do a wash on wood um, because the wood does need to be raw enough that it's actually going to absorb the paint. Hi, Carol from Texas. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. And we have Terry. Um, thank you so much. She tells me I need to get this back leg done. <laughs> so I'll definitely be working on that. And welcome so much. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so I'm going to get this little guy. Yeah, now luckily for me, I didn't need to take any finish off of this piece because this was like an old weathered piece that um, I pulled out of like a little barn on um, someone's property and it was so weathered. It had been stained at some point. I can definitely tell that it had a dark stain, um, but it was so long ago that it's long since eroded away and the wood was raw enough to be able to absorb the wash, which is great. So that's awesome. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and see. And I'm gonna give it just another moment or two before I go ahead and do the sealer. 
Um, but I really wanted to demonstrate for you guys how I do my sealing on a piece that's super duper rough like this. Um, it's just so that you guys could get a sense for how to use our Vax products with a brush um, because we do get that question from time to time. So Eddie is saying that's starting to look really good. So thank you, Eddie. Yeah, it's just a fun way to give something just a cute little facelift. facelift. So uh, Carol is asking, um, am I going to decorate this? So Carol, thank you for asking that question. So this cute little bench that I found, it's really rickety, so no one's ever going to sit on this bench for sure. It's gonna actually go out on my front porch and it's gonna be covered in flowers. So um, this is just going to be, I'll probably have some flowers on top, next to it, maybe in front of it. So it's just going to be kind of a riser for my front porch flower display, which I'm gonna try to get done this afternoon so that I can post a picture for you guys. Um, but if it, it is really super rainy, so I might not be able to get a really pretty staged picture um, because it's so dark here in Oregon when it's rainy. But I promise as soon as uh, the time is right, I will definitely post the picture for you guys with this on my front porch covered in flowers for sure because that's what I want for this. And this was a piece that I picked up for free. Um, so I got this piece for free. I used about two tablespoons of paint and I'm gonna use probably uh, maybe two tablespoons of sealer and this whole thing is gonna be done and it's gonna be a really cute little stand for the flowers for my porch. So you couldn't get much cheaper. Um, I see this stuff on the side of the road all the time. Um, probably not at Goodwill, but garage sales and kicking around in old barns. So these are easy types of things to pick up. And as well, like the construction on this, you could easily slap something like this together with some barn wood or something. It would be really cute too. So, all right. So it's all ready for my sealing process. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to take another little paper bowl. I'm going to shake up. Hi, Terry. She says it's gonna be really beautiful. Thank you so much, I'm really excited too. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and shake up my sealer here using Shabby Paints Matte Vax. And I'm just putting like about mm, a tablespoon or so. Uh, missed a spot on the leg. Oh, back here, okay. Thank you for that. It's hard to see these angles when I'm trying to be in the camera and doing this. I got a bald spot back here. Oh, I just scared a spider away. It was living in here somewhere. Okay, perfect. No more little bald spots. Thank you. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I put my little bit of sealer in here. <laughs> yeah, Shabby Shannon says team painting. Yes, I need your guys' eyeballs because my view right now is like super limited. So thanks for helping me out, you guys. Um, all right, so I think we're gonna go ahead and use this brush right here because I'm gonna be able to cook along really quickly. This is the Klingon F50 brush. Now, if you guys haven't heard of Klingon brushes, they're um, they're really nice brushes. Um, most of our shabby paint stylists carry them. They are handmade and I believe Berlin and I absolutely love them. So this is the F50 right here, which is flat and it's, it's pretty large. So I like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just dipping my brush in some clean water. Yeah, Luann says it looks new. This one has been loved. I'll tell you, if you saw most of my brushes, you'd be ashamed of me for not taking very good care of them because I paint so much. Um, but this one actually, I've been really good and I've made sure to take super good care of it. Um, so I do try, but when you're make, when you're painting, you know, three or four pieces of furniture a week, sometimes they get a little bit abused. Um, okay, so now when you're doing the sealing with a damp sponge, the way that you do it is you get your sponge all the way damp, you wring it out all the way so it's wet but not dripping. Um, 
Now it's a little bit more tricky, I think, to get the right ratio when you're using the brush. So what I've done is I've, I've gotten the brush a little bit more damp than I probably would if I was using a sponge, um, just so that I can get the right level of water and product mixture. And the way that our sealers work is unlike a poly or a wax or something like that, you're not actually trying to create like a coat or a layer. What you're kind of doing is, um, the way I like to describe it is, is almost like massaging lotion into your skin. So you're just wanting to create, you're wanting to let the product absorb and bond with the wood or bond with the paint um, by soaking in and not actually being like a thick layer on the top. So sometimes people make mistakes with our products that way is they will either not use a damp brush or sponge or they will um, put on way too much. A little goes a long way. Um, so you don't need a ton of this and it will seal very well. If you put too much on, that is actually going to hinder you um, because it will not work properly. So what I'm doing is I'm just going along and giving this a little coat. So I'm just going to dampen my brush just a little bit more. Get my product in there. Just like just like that. And I'm just doing a nice thin layer. It only takes a moment. This whole part right here has been sealed with one coat. So now we're gonna go ahead and move to the other side. I'm gonna get my, my brush just a little bit damp again. And give it just the tiniest bit of product. It does not need a lot, just a little tiny bit, you guys. If you're going through bottles and bottles of this stuff, you're using way too much and you're wasting and you're losing money. It doesn't take very much at all. These products are phenomenal. So it's a really good value, which is super nice. I'm just gonna get my brush damp again. Add a little bit more. And that has one coat of sealer. Now this piece has a lot of deep grooves and because it is going to go outside, I am going to try to push the product into the grooves for sure. And I'm gonna come back around to the other side. I didn't get these legs over here. So I'm gonna move you again. And we're gonna go ahead and get these legs. So I dipped again, just the tiniest bit of product. Not going to do two coats on camera um, but I will do two coats for this piece um, and two coats will be great and it will seal it just wonderfully okay you guys so I'm gonna back it up just so you can kind of get a glance of it here isn't this cute so that's how easy it is to whitewash wood. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry. Um, thank you guys so much for, for joining us and for checking out our tutorial on whitewashing wood today. Um, so we're so excited to have you. We're using Shabby Paints Worn White. I have sealed it with matte vax and um, yeah, and then I'll show you a picture here soon of what this cute little quick piece looks like with flowers on my front porch. And, um, and I'll also post the total cost for this project. 
Um, I'm thinking with two tablespoons of paint, two tablespoons of Vax, and the amount of my time, I'd want to say this is about a five to ten dollar project um, because I actually got this piece for free. So that is so great. And then if you're looking for a shabby paint stylist near you, um, Shabby Shannon will post the link um, to our find a retailer map and you can get some shabby paints for yourself. You can find a local retailer or you can find one of our retailers that has an online store. And if none of those options works out for you, then you can order directly from the website, but please um, support our, our shabby paint stylist first, okay? Um, we definitely wanna be supporting our stylists and our small businesses, so thank you so much. Again, my name is Heather, and this is Fabulous Fridays with Heather. And I will see you guys next week with another fun project. And we'll see another part of my house and some of my other projects that I have. And that'll be fun. So thank you guys so much. I'll see you next time.